Good day everyone, welcome back to our video. Today we'll be working on using piezo on Arduino. So what is a piezo? It is basically a type of buzzer that can use to produce sound. So without further ado, let's look at an example. So when you go into your new exercise, remember that you have to put in the exercise name. In this case, we'll be doing exercise 3.1. Piezo buzzer will work with Arduino directly, so let's put an Arduino board into our working area. And then you can look for Piezo, which is at the very end of the list over here. Okay, so this is what the Piezo look like. In some newer Piezo buzzer, it doesn't matter where you connect positive or negative side. But for some older version, you still have positive and negative. So it, it is better if you keep it as a habit that you connect the positive and negative correctly. And depend on the type of piezo buzzer that you bought, you could have the one that couldn't run the 5 volts straight away, so you will need to use resistor as well. So what is the advantage of using resistor? If it can't take in that, that much power, or basically that much voltage, it might burn. So it is better if you put in a resistor every time because if it can handle that much of voltage and you put a resistor, the most it will do is to reduce the sound. So let's try the, the one with 100 ohm resistor. Okay, 100 ohm resistor is the standard if you use the buzzer that requires resistance. So now we need to connect the positive end Okay, if we double check over here, this is the positive in. We need to connect the positive in into any of the signal area. Okay, and then the negative in straight to our GND, which is ground. It is actually very easy to control our piezo buzzer using code from Arduino. So in Arduino, there is actually a built-in code for you to control the sound by the piezo buzzer and in our Tinkercad you have the play speaker on pin okay this is the one um, that you will use to control the piezo so you can look at the pin number let's say this one is on pin 10 okay and then we can change the tone let's change it to 31st and play You will notice that it will make continuous noise even though it only put for one second here. That's because we don't have anything that tell it to stop. So in order to stop it, we can use this thing called turn off speaker or you can use another tone, change it to other tone before you turn it off. So let's say this one turn it on for one second and we just put in this one. What will happen is that it will actually have com conflicting information because this one tells to play, play this one tells to slow down to turn off what happened is that after you even though you put in one second over here it doesn't stop executing other code which means it will play while it go to turn off so what we need to do is that we still need to use wait one second in between to stop it and then let's say we want it to only start the cycle after waiting for one more second so if you do it this way it will play for one second, stop, play again for one second, stop again. Now, we don't know what this tone 30 means. If you try to change it back to 60, you, it will have a high pitch noise. Okay, which is something like a sharpest noise. Actually, if you want to know what tone they are, you can click over here and change it to block plus text. After you have changed it to block plus text, you can clearly see on the code over here, the text place, it tells you that basically tone 60 is C5, which will be playing in 523 hertz. Okay, so we can actually change the tone to the one that we want and play the tone. So let's say if I move this one now and then duplicate another one over here. Okay. Then I can make multiple tones so that it can play for different amount of time. Another thing is, if you don't want to use turn off speaker, you can actually change the value over here. 
let's say after you play, play turn 30 for one second, you want it to wait for one second before it go to the next one. We put one second over here, which means it will play for one second, and all we need to do is just change this one to two. So we can remove this one totally, change this one to two. Then when you play, So it will basically play for one second, but because of this two second over here, it will wait for two full seconds, which means the one second that while this one is playing and another second before it go to the next tone. So keep in mind that if the wait time is actually lower than the time that is set over here, you will have conflicting information and play only one of the two. Okay, so on today's conclusion, we can connect piezo buzzer or speaker to Arduino and use it to produce sound. On Tinkercad, because we don't have speaker, so we'll only use piezo buzzer, which looks like that. In the Arduino code block, what we'll do is the play speaker on pin code in order to play the tone. And remember that you need to set the correct pin number. You may change the code into code, uh, block plus text in order to look at the corresponding frequency and musical notes. If you know what musical notes you, you are looking for, then you can use it to change. Now, if the after, even after you have duration in the code block, you will still need to use weight to control the duration properly. Otherwise, if you have multiple tones stacked together, they won't be able to play correctly. Depend on the type of buzzer that you use. Some newer one, may need to, uh, sorry, some older one may need to have the 100 ohm resistor in between for safety reason. So if you, if you want to be safe, you always use that 100 ohm resistor. It also has positive and negative side, even though the model one doesn't require you to split it correct, um, properly, usually the positive side will have longer leg compared to the short, um, negative side. Okay, so it is a good habit to connect them correctly. And then finally, you can use turn off speaker to shit it off. So that's all for this exercise and thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you in our next video.